Hi guys, my name's Deb Marnie and I'm from Aussie Mail. Welcome to our Chain Mail tutorial channel. Hey guys, a big hi, hello, welcome, how are you? So pleased to see you here. Thanks for popping in and spending some time with us. So it's December and it's all things Christmas, it's all things crazy. And for our December Mail Club subscription box, we did a couple of kits that we felt were Christmas related. So this is the first kit from our Mail Club subscription box for December. If you're interested in finding out some more information about the subscription box, um, details will be down below. Uh, this one is a bobble for your Christmas tree. Uh, we're just simply calling it a Byzantine bobble. It's actually a kit I designed about four or five years ago now. Uh, we've pulled it out of the Aussie Mail vault, uh, dusted it off, and it's a Mail Club exclusive kit. All right, guys, so that's enough. Let's just jump straight into it. Hey, guys, so here's a sample piece of the bobble that we'll be making today. It's a little hard to get a really good shot of it um, with our current setup. But this is what it looks like and coming up on the screen now are the list of tools and components that you're going to need to make this bobble. So you can stop the video and quickly write it down, screenshot it or alternatively guys they will be listed um, in the description tab underneath this video. Okay so to start our um, project today we're going to just make a chain of Byzantine. And to do that, I'm just going to pre-close two of my BA rings or my bright aluminium rings. And once I've closed those, I'm going to grab a twist tie and feed that through those two rings. Now, if you don't have a twist tie, you can feed it onto a paper clip or if you've got just a little scrap of wire lying around, grab that. Although it's not 100% necessary, it does make it a little bit easier to handle these rings. Um, okay, so once you've got that in place, we want to take up another bright aluminium and we want to make our base ring of three pairs of uh, rings. So Byzantine always starts with three pairs of um, jump rings. So if you just go ahead now and make up that chain with three pairs of rings, so that is a chain of two, two and two, and they're all in the bright aluminium. Okay, so there you go. I've got my starting chain of three pairs of rings. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab that work between my thumb and my finger. I'm going to flip back the end pair of rings. So I've got one sitting on each side of my work. I'm going to take that all the way back, squeeze it against my work. And I'm going to separate out these pair of rings that are on the top. Because what we're looking for next is this gap in here. Okay, this gap just here which is the rings that we just flipped back. We want to put our next rings straight through that gap there like that. So to do that, we're going to take up one of our anodized aluminium rings, our AA rings, and we're just going to go through there, pick up those two rings, locking it all in place. And then once we've done that, we're going to double that ring up. In Byzantine, you always work in pairs of rings. So where you place one ring, you must place another. Okay, so there's our half Byzantine unit. And what we want to do is we want to keep going and create the other half of this unit. So going back to our BA rings, and we're going to make up that starting chain of three pairs of rings. So this time, the last pair of rings that we put in place, which in this case happened to be the anodized aluminium, they're our first pair of rings. And we just need to now place two more pairs in the bright aluminium. Okay, so we do that. And now 
now just one more ring. Okay. So there's our starting chain of three rings again. One, two, three. Holding our work in place, flip back that end pair of rings again, all the way back so they squish against our work. Move that top pair of rings until you can see that gap that's in there. Okay, that's where we're going to place our next set of rings. And that ring will be another bright aluminium ring. Okay, and we put that in there. And then of course, we double that ring up. Okay, so there's one completed Byzantine unit and we're going to keep making um, a chain of these until we have a total of 16 pairs of the anodized aluminium rings in our weave. So just to show you to keep continuing, again we need to now have our three pairs of uh, starting rings. The last ring that we placed, of course, is our first pair, and we then want to place two more pairs of bright aluminium rings. Okay, so that's the second pair of rings, and we want to place one more pair to make up that starting chain of three sets of rings. open that up very well let's do that again okay so there we've got our three sets of rings one two three and as we did before pinch our work between our thumb and our finger flip the ends back all the way back against the work separate that top pair of rings so you can see that space in there and in there we're going to place a pair of anodized aluminium rings this time to lock it all into place. Okay, so pop our first ring in there. And our second ring. Okay, so you can see that we're keeping the aluminium rings just in one line, so we're not going you know a pair here a pair here a pair here so every alternating pair of caged rings is uh, colored okay so once you've got that in place we just keep going with the rings until like I said you've got 16 sets of colored rings in your piece and then when you get when you've place that 16th pair of rings so let's just say that's our 16th pair of rings what you then want to do is just place two pairs of your bright aluminium rings okay just like you were creating your next segment or next part of your Byzantine weave but this time we're not going to fold them back just yet you're just going to leave them hanging okay so you go ahead and create the rest of your chain, remembering to make it 16, have a total of 16 pairs of those anodized aluminium rings in there. And then when you've done that, and your work looks like this on the other end, start the video up again and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so I just want to do a quick tip to help you out with knowing um, when to put the anodized aluminium rings. So I've got my three piece starter chain here, as you can see, and I've folded it back and I've pinched it against my work. And now I'm going, oh, wait a minute, what color rings do I need to put in here? So one way you can help to recognize what color rings you are up to next, when you're holding your work, say like this, you can see that this ring here is bright aluminum. So we want our next ring to be our anodized aluminium okay so just have a look at 
the work. You can see that this thing here, this color ring here on top is BA. Our next one that goes in there is AA. And of course, the other way to double check is just to cast a quick eye down your work and see what color rings are in that alignment. And then you'll know which ones to put in. But there's just a little tip that if you were getting yourself a little bit confused about what rings uh, need to, what colored rings need to go next. Okay, so I finished my chain to the point that I've got 16 of these coloured rings in my chain. And I finished off with um, two pairs of bright aluminium rings. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back to the beginning of my piece. I'm going to remove that twist tie. And I'm also going to remove one of these rings that we started with. Okay, so just got to find the join, which of course, when you need to open a ring, you can never find the join. Must be one here somewhere. Okay, so I'm going to remove that ring. I'm just going to set that aside because we will need that again. And what we're going to do is we're going to join each of these um, ends to each other. So in preparation for that, I'm going to go back to the end of our work and I'm going to fold back those last pairs of rings like we normally would. And then back here at our beginning, I'm going to open up that ring that we left in the work and making sure that our chain isn't twisted in any way because we don't want it to twist. I'm going to take that open ring and feed it through those folded back rings, okay? Just like we normally would if we were doing Byzantine. This time though, of course, we've got uh, the chain on our piece. So I'm going to put it through there and close that ring back up again. Okay, and your work should look like this. So you can see I've got no twists in my chain um, and I've got just the one ring in there. So we now wanna take the ring that we removed and we want to put that in there to finish the closing point as well. So this can be a little tricky, but uh, just take your time and go slowly with it and you should be fine. So I just need to feed that through one pair of those rings that we folded back on one end and swing our work around and feed it through um, the folded back rings on the other end of our work. Okay, and then bring it around so that we can see our ring there in the opening. So now we want to close this and this is where it is difficult. So you don't have a lot to work with so you're going to need your thinnest nosed pliers that you've got and what you want to do is you just want to come in and slowly start rocking those ends towards each other. So just do it in little increments, adjust and go back in and keep going until you can close it. Now, if you do mangle that ring a little bit, don't be too concerned because we can cover that up with the next step. So once you've um, got that ring closed, we can move on to the next step. Okay, so now with the next step, like I said, if you um, mangled your rings a little bit from closing it, don't worry, this is where we can get to cover it up. So taking up one of your bright aluminium rings again, go to the pair of rings that you just closed. And if you didn't make a mess of it, it doesn't matter which pair of the silver rings you choose, but this is just a way of closing, um, hiding that if you did have a little difficulty closing it. So take your bright aluminium ring and feed it through the pair of rings that you just closed your piece up with. Okay, close that up and repeat with a second ring. Okay, so we've got two rings in there. Now what we want to do is we want to flip over to the other side of that same pair of rings and we want to place one of our bright aluminium rings in there. Okay, now 
it may be a little tight but just persevere with it guys it does go in so there you go so it should look like this at the moment now you want to go around and um, do that all the way around your circle so what we want to do is we want to count down four pairs from here so we go and this is the silver cage ring so we go one two three four and on that fourth pair of silver rings we do it exactly the same we put making sure you've got it on the same side okay so two rings all on one side one ring are all on the other side put the two rings in first and then once you've got those two rings placed flip your work over to the other side and place the single ring okay so just through this the same silver pair of rings and you've got the same three sets of rings so again go down four one two three four making sure it's all on the same size side I should say so this side is our two rings so we put those in the other side is our single ring so I flip that over and we put our single ring in okay and then we count down four again one two three four and we put our next pair of rings in making sure they're all on the same side okay that's our two ring side so we put two rings in there Okay, and then we flip our work over and we put that single BA ring in. Okay, so there we go. This is what our work looks like. So you should have between each pair of rings, if we're looking at the top here, three pairs of silver rings okay so there's one two three there one two three there one two three there and one two three okay so that's what we're looking at all right so once you've got that in place we can move on to the next step okay so picking one of those pairs it doesn't matter which one it is we now want to add another pair of bright aluminium rings to that so that we've got a chain of two two um, coming off our um, Byzantine circle there, circle chain. All right, so once you've got those two rings in place, we're going to fold them back like we would if we were doing Byzantine. Okay. And we're going to open that up and we're going to feed some rings in there. Now, this is very tight. So one thing I do suggest is when you position these rings, you actually put them underneath the uh, rings that are in the chain. So you can see I've sort of opened the, the middle chain up a little bit and slipped that ring on the inside. And if you do that on the other side as well, just gives you a little bit more breathing space to uh, place your next set of rings. So this is a little fiddly. It may take you a little while to get used to it and to the hang of it but if you can just slip them in there, it will help. It might be easier to just place one ring first and then maneuver those rings into position. So our next ring will be a bright aluminium ring and we wanna come in as if we were doing Byzantine and scoop up those two rings that we folded back, okay? And then close that up. And we wanna put a second ring in there. So as you can see, 
we wouldn't be able to put a second ring in there if we have this ring sitting on top of the ones that are in the chain so if you can squeeze that in behind those rings okay it will give you a little bit more um, breathing space to work with now I'm not going to lie these are a little tricky to do it may take you a little while to get there but um, it is what we need to do to get this uh, to get some more working space and it is being a little stubborn there we go so we've slipped that in there and then we want to place that second ring in and we close that up. So I was able to do that with one ring on the outside. Sorry, I think I might have moved the camera there. Let's move that back into position a bit better. So you can see I've got one ring sitting on the inside there and the other ring is on the outside and I still managed to get that to work. Um, and then you know you can go in and you can make that change now so that they're the same or if you like just leave one tucked out and one tucked in this is your work that's totally your call if you find that just a little too frustrating to deal with then it might be easier to leave one out and one in but there you go you can see I've tucked that in and then off here now we're just going to make um, another uh, chain of Byzantine and this time we're going to make it so that we've got a total of four of our colored rings on this chain so this is our first set and we just want to go through and make the Byzantine like you have been the whole time until you've got four of those rings placed and then once you place your last um, pair of anodized aluminium rings then you'll want to go around and repeat that same step on all four or the three remaining pairs of rings that we put in place okay so just go ahead and make that chain each one has four pairs of anodized aluminium rings and those anodized aluminium rings are the last rings in the chain so if you go ahead and do that now guys and um, pause the video and I will uh, meet you back here when you're ready to move on to the next step. Okay so this weird looking piece is what we should be looking at next. So there is our original chain of Byzantine and coming off that are our four small segments that are four AA caged units long okay so you should have that all coming off the same side make sure they're all on the same side and uh, your work should look like this okay so what we want to do now is we want to take up our large ring our 14 gauge 10 millimeter ID ring and we're going to feed that through each of the um, pairs of anodized aluminium rings that are left. So we're going to go through one, two, three, and four. And we're going to close that up. Okay. Oops, sorry, didn't mean to throw the pliers down so heavily. So our work should now look like this. We're starting to get uh, the cage look. And as you can see, it will slip over the top of your bobble. Okay, just like that. But we're not ready to put it on the bobble yet. We haven't finished. Okay, so we're not quite ready to, to finish it yet. So what we want to do now is we want to come. So we've got this set of three um pairs of bright aluminium so we're now looking at the side that has got that single loop you know how we put the single loops in there before so we're looking at that side 
and in here we've got one, two, three pairs, and we want to go to the middle pair here. And in there, we want to make a very short piece of half Byzantine. Okay, so we've found that middle pair of rings there, and we now want to take up a bright aluminium ring and we want to put it through that middle pair. We're going to make up a small piece, well, a half Byzantine section. So we need to put two rings in there. And then we're going to put two more bright aluminium rings. Okay, so that we've got that chain um, of two, two bright aluminium rings. And then like we did before, we're going to fold these back and we want to put some um, anodized aluminium jump rings in there. So again, it might be easier to just put one in. Okay, and if you're having difficulty putting a second one in, remember to just sort of fold those rings so that they sit on the outside and our new folded back rings sit on the inside. And then it's a bit easier to come in and place that second ring. Okay, now it's up to you if you want to come in and make sure the back of your work matches the front of your work. That is that those new folded back rings sit on inside of the old ones. Okay, so our work should look like this. So what you need to do now is go around and repeat that on every middle set of those three BA rings in those sections. So there's our uh, single rings. And then if we count down one, two, and we go to that one there, that's where we need to start our next half Byzantine section. So I'm going to put my pair of BA rings in there. And I'm just going to do what I did before to create that small section of half Byzantine. Okay, so again, just make sure you do that all the way around until you have four of these small sections of half Byzantine in your work. Okay, so here's our piece now and I've placed those four sections of half Byzantine in. You can see there uh, in the middle of the each of the single rings. So we've got a single ring, a blank unit, a half Byzantine, a blank unit, a single ring, a blank unit, a half Byzantine. So you can see that pattern all the way around your piece. Now, before we put this down um, and work on something else, we just want to take now another of our bright aluminium rings and we want to put it through the end of each of our half Byzantine units. And uh, we're going to place two of those, okay? So two pairs of bright aluminium rings on the end of each of the half Byzantine units that you just constructed. Okay, so if you just go ahead and do that and then we can put this piece down and we can work on some of the components that we're then going to attach to our main piece of work. Okay, so if you go ahead and place those rings now and I will meet you back here to show you what we're going to do next. Okay, so our next step just uh, involves making up some small chain pieces. And I'm going to be doing that with the 20 gauge um, 2.75 millimeter ID rings. So it's just a simple one, one, one chain, nothing fancy. And you need a chain that is 12 rings long and you will need a total of eight of these chains. So if you go ahead now guys and whip up those eight chains that are 12 rings long and I will meet you back here to uh, show you uh, what we do once we've made all those chains up. Okay so I've made up all my little chain units so eight in total are 12 rings long. I'm going to set those aside as well and now I'm just going to create little beaded unit. So to do that grab your uh, teardrop bead. Now this is a check glass bead. It is uh, nine by six millimeters drilled from top to bottom. Okay so I'm just going to feed that onto a head pin 
and then taking up my little short nose pie, I'm going to pop it in there against the bead, um, fold that back. Now I'm going to do this as a wrapped loop. Um, you don't have to do that, or if you've got a plooper, you can just make a normal ploop, a loop, I mean. <laughs> But uh, this is the way I'm doing it. So once I've uh, taken that back at a 90 degree angle, I'm going to fit my round nose pliers in the uh, bend there. And then I'm going to bring that wire back over the top, back towards me. I'm going to shift my pliers sideways like that and just continue that wrap all the way around. So that gives me a rough little loop there. I'm just going to come in. I'm going to straighten that up a little bit. And then I'm just going to wrap some of that remaining wire around until I'm snug up against the bead. Then I'm going to cut that off. Okay, so you'll need a total of eight of those units. So you go ahead and make those up however it is you want to do that. And I'll meet you back here so that we can put it finally all together. Okay, so to start with, we're going to go back to those single rings that we put in, okay? And what we want to do with these is we want to open that back up, pop on one of those beaded units that we did and close that ring up. So you want to do that all the way around your work on all of those single rings okay um, if you don't like opening your work back up again if that's a problem for you uh, you can always just attach these with um, an extra ring if, if you wanted to if you didn't want to open your work up just put a ring through the loop and then through the single ring that we've left um, but this was the way I originally designed it so that's what I'm going to head going to go ahead and do today so you need to pop a bead on each of those four rings. Okay, so I've got one more. Okay. All right. So there you go, I've put those beads on those single rings that we put into place a few steps ago. So what I'm going to do now is put beads on these half Byzantine units that we've put into place. So I'm just going to grab another one of our bright aluminium rings, I'm going to feed our one of our beads onto that and then feed that through those last two sets of uh, bright aluminium rings so that our work looks like this okay you can see that and I'm going to go around and do that to all of those half Byzantine units and this will use up the remainder of your beaded units that you made up so just popping them onto a new bright aluminium ring and then before closing feeding that bright aluminium ring through the pair that we hung off those half Byzantine units. Okay, so through there. And then one more. Okay. So that's all our beads in place now on our work. And now we want to um, attach, oh, yep. now we want to attach our um, chains that we made with our 20 gauge rings. Okay, so to attach the chain, we want to take up a, another 20 gauge 2.75 millimeter ID ring, feed one end of the chain onto that. And then before we close that ring up, grab one of the rings that have got a bead hanging off it um, it doesn't matter which ring whether it's the one here from the single ring or the one from the um, Byzantine unit half Byzantine unit it doesn't matter we're going to join rings to all of them eventually 
but for this case I'm going to grab this beaded unit here and I'm going to pop on my 20 gauge ring and I'm going to close that up okay and then I want to take another 20 gauge ring feed that through the other end of my chain and then I want to attach that to the next ring that holds a bead in my work okay so I'm just going to feed that through there attach that on and there you go okay so we've got something that looks like that now you can run these front to front like I have all the way around or you can say do one chain at the front of the bead and then when you go to the next bead you put it at the back of that chain it's up to you how you want to do this I think I might actually undo this and put it at the back of the chain at the back of the bead and then when I put my next one in place so you can see here the chain sits at the front and then it sits at the back this one here, when I put my next one in place, I'm going to sit it at the front of that bead. Okay, so grabbing a new chain, putting it on my opened ring. I'm going to put that one on the front of the bead there. Okay. Take up another opened ring. I'm going to feed that through that chain that I've just added and then when I attach it to this ring over here holding this bead I'm going to go through the back of that ring so it sits behind the bead okay and then the next one will sit on the front and the back etc etc so how you layer those onto your work that's totally up to you but what we want to do is we want to run a chain from each bead to each bead so if you go ahead guys and do that and um, I'll meet you back here and I'll um, show you the next step okay so I have attached all my chains uh, to the beads or to the rings holding the beads and so now what I want to do is basically dress our bauble but before we do that just make up a quick uh, single chain a one 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 chain um, this is with the 532nd ID rings the same rings that you made um, the, the um, cage the Byzantine cage out of so I've got about a dozen rings on here uh, you can make that up to the length that you need to fit your Christmas tree but this will be the thing that we hang on to the Christmas tree branch so if you whip that up first that would be great and then what you want to do is you want to take your bobble now I'm using these plastic bobbles that that split in half these ones are six centimeters uh, so you can see if I measure that across the diameter there that's six centimeters okay so that's the size that will fit this particular cage. If your bobble is a different size, then this cage isn't going to fit it and you'll have to adjust it, adjust it according to your bobble. But anyway, put your bobble together if you have to. And then taking up your cage, we want to put this over the top of our bobble so that our large ring there sits over the the hook and we want to just gently press that cage down until it goes um, as far as it can on our bobble okay so it should look like this and then taking up now this is a 16 gauge AWG 5.5 millimeter ID ring it doesn't have to be this exact size this is just the one that I chose to use I'm going to feed that through our hole there in our bobble and then before 
I close that down. I'm going to feed both ends of my chain through that. And then close it up. Okay, so there you go. That's the chain to go onto your Christmas tree branch or wherever it is that you're going to hang this. And hopefully I can get this in the camera shot. But there you go, guys. There's your finished Byzantine bauble. Now, you could always get creative and maybe put a little keepsake inside these. This is why I like these ones that come apart. If you don't like the look of that seam, then maybe you could try and hide it a little bit with by lining it up with the um, string of Byzantine. It doesn't stop it from showing there, but, you know, that's a thought. I am, you, as I was saying, you could put a little keepsake in here, make it special to uh, yourself or the person that you're gifting it to. Um, maybe fill it up with a cotton wool or something to make it look like snow, uh, feathers, things like that. You can do some fabulous things by putting some different uh, little bits and bobs inside your bauble to personalize it even further. But um, there it is, guys. I really hope that uh, you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you like our little Christmas tree bobble. Let's see if I can get a better, better angle with the camera. There we go. Alright guys, well that's it. That is the tutorial today. I hope you enjoyed it and you um, have a stunning um, Christmas tree bobble this year to hang on your tree. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up here at YouTube, share the video with your mates. Um, and if you're not a subscriber, consider doing so. It really does help us out um, and encourages us to keep going with these tutorials for you. Um, while you're here on our channel, don't forget to check out some of the other content. At time of recording, we've got over 190 heading towards our over 200 videos here. So there is definitely something for everybody to check out. And last but not least, guys, don't forget to uh, click our shop link up here and get a, give it a little bit of love. That's where you can find the bits and bobs and you know what that you will need to create your wonderful chainmail pieces. All right, guys, thanks again. And um, I hope to catch up with you sometime in the very near future. Bye now.